Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, and I am here to answer the video that Death Battle put out about Hulk vs. Doomsday. If you didn't see it, I recommend highly that you go and watch it. It was done very, very well. God, I hope that I can get to the level one of these days with my YouTube channel to be able to do death battles like that, death battle-like uh, versus matches, the way that they do it. Absolutely amazing, fantastic work. They got a, a good crew to do that. Me, I just reached 100 subscribers today, so yay me. <laughs> but eventually I'll get there. In the meantime, when we're talking about Hulk versus Doomsday, here's what's at stake here. All right, here's what's at stake. If you're a DC fan, you're going to believe that Doomsday is going to win. And if you're a Marvel fan, you're going to believe that Marvel's going to win. If you're kind of a comic book fan, now we can have a real discussion. See, I love Superman. There is no hero greater than Superman. He was the first real superhero. He is the epitome of what we all want to be. And realistically, it's kind of my love of Superman, why I love Captain America so much. I actually just realized I was wearing this shirt as a look at myself in the video. Because Superman, I can never be. Captain America, well, with a few more push-ups, I can be. So, you know, like, they're both really just the exact same character, just, you know, like this. But, Bill, this isn't a Superman versus Captain America video, and I'll probably never make a Superman versus Captain America movie. Ooh, unless I'm talking about morals. But anyway... The reason why I say this is because, you know, DC does have much more powerful characters than Marvel. Much more powerful. I'm not saying that every DC character can beat up every Marvel character. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I am suggesting is that when push comes to shove, come on, guys. I, just like the JLA versus Avengers comic when uh, Superman beat Thor. I believe that Superman would beat Thor. But I don't believe it would be in just a couple of panels. Um, when Superman says, you know, wow, you're really tough and all that stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, where, where I come from, I guess that the dial just gets turned to 11. Uh, maybe 11 is not even a good enough number. I will comment on that once in a while. That's actually where that term comes from when I say that. You know, oh, but when with DC, the dial's turned to 11. In reality, I think that actually goes up to about 15. The characters in Mar uh, excuse me, in DC are gods and they they genuinely are gods i mean if you've ever seen the the flash tv show which who hasn't the symbol that they have on the wall of the police station there is of the greek gods that's supposed to represent if you didn't know the justice league uh, superman is zeus all right and uh, aquaman is poseidon uh, Artemis the Hunter, hey, that's Green Arrow, baby. Mercury, that's clearly the Flash, and so on and so forth, right? Like, those are the gods. You know, uh, when you look back and you read the, the, um, the mythologies of the Greeks and the Romans, it was really great, very storied, very detailed. But when you go back and look at the history, they didn't really believe in that stuff. I mean, yeah, some people did, you know, to a degree, but it wasn't quite that you know especially later on with the at the time of the philosophers and whatnot and, and you look at like Aesop and things like that they didn't really believe that stuff not really it was the modern mythology at the time well dc comics is our modern mythology it really is because it's it's just that good these are these are not regular people doing they're, they're, they're gods having regular problems just like in the greek mythologies there were gods that had mortal problems, and it somehow made us feel better, you know? Marvel is more of, this is us, and we're out here and we're dealing with stuff. Even though you got characters like the Hulk, you know, the strongest one there is, he's really just a guy, and he turns to a guy, right? And, you know, his, his curse is turning into... So, when you're talking about powers, for the most part, DC's gonna trump Marvel almost every time if it's just a straight-up fight and they both got their things. I mean, you could sit here and argue, oh, if the the Flash comes out of uh, the DC Universe, he's only going to be a regular speedster, not a speed, speed force speedster. So, you know, Quicksilver might be able to beat him. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a good theory. We'll never really know. You know, when push comes to shove, how are we ever really going to know? Uh, so, 
realistically, I, I don't want this to any of this to turn into a, you know, like a street fight in the chat forums or anything like that. What I honestly just want this to do is just be an open discussion. And the way that this open discussion goes is, you know, it's comic books, it's not real, but we look at this with, you know, a somewhat analytical eye. And I don't like the way that death battle ended the, um, or even for the most part, aside from the animations, how everything went there. Um, I just don't believe, I, I hope that you guys already looked at the video. I don't believe that uh, Doomsday is going to beat the Hulk, at least not the first time. I'm going to tell you straight out. When Hulk and Doomsday meet, Hulk wins, hands down, with pretty much, pretty much no problems the first time. Now, Doomsday comes back and evolves stronger than he was before, specifically being able to exploit the way that he was attacked last time and never be killed the same way twice, right? Theoretically, theoretically. As I've mentioned in my Doomsday videos before, you can't really evolve out of a butt whooping. <laughs> I mean, a, a punch to the face is a punch to the face, you know, so. But yeah, when push comes to shove, the second time, or you know, when, when uh, they battle the second time after they've already fought. Now that's a slightly different story. And I'm going to give you several reasons for this. Look, first off, the the Doomsday character is a direct ripoff of the Hulk. I've had plenty and plenty more conversations where Marvel has directly ripped off DC before. So by me saying that DC ripped off a character from the Hulk, guys, please... A little bit of patience, calm down, look at it honestly. It's true. <laughs> um, you know, he's directly ripped off and they added spikes to him. So, you know, oh, but he evolves. Guess what? So does the Hulk. The Hulk's healing factor is such that he can recover from anything quickly. And more than that, the Hulk uh, can even develop, a lot of people say gills. They're not actually gills, but they're kind of, they, they, they function almost exactly like gills do. They, 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 their purpose is the same, but they're not actually gills. It's actually a gland that allows him to uh, breathe water. But yes, when he's underwater, and he's done this several times, it's not just one writer doing this, he's been able to breathe underwater. So he does also adapt. He, he's able to do that. The thing is, not a lot of things have been able to kill him that he needs to be able to adapt to things like that. First off, please try to understand that the first time that Superman fought Doomsday, he was holding back because that's just what Superman does. I think that there is nobody who is a comic book fan who actually knows the character of Superman in any way, shape, or form who doesn't agree with me 100% in that regards. Superman never fights a new opponent, opponent he's never met before, an opponent he's never heard of before, whatever, at full strength. He would never do it. It wasn't until he was fighting him and then he real uh, he fought him the first time and he lost because he didn't realize what he was. Then he fought against him the second time in part four of Death of Superman where he actually died-ish, details on that later, where... He, he fought him, and he. it wasn't until he was in the middle of the battle and was already wounded really bad that he just, by the time he realized that this was a, a non-sentient creature, essentially, that's when he was finally able to go and not hold back, really. But it was already too late. He was already so wounded. There's only but so much that the sun's going to be able to do. You know, his healing factor isn't going to increase any faster. It's just going to heal him as normal is going to heal him. And he was already wounded way too badly. So he wound up, you know, essentially for all intents and purposes, dying at that moment. But he also took Doomsday with him and he actually killed Doomsday. Doomsday didn't really kill Superman anyway. So yeah, there we go. That's how that happened. Now, the second time they fought, uh, Hunter Prey was one of the best best comics that you're going to read. It gave the details, and I don't want to go too much into it because I already covered that in my two-part Doomsday video. Um, hopefully I remember to put the links up, but um, it showed how he can evolve, he, how he could potentially evolve even before he dies. Case in point with the Sonic Rays, he developed, while he was still alive, the 
bone spurs over his ears so that the sonic emitter wouldn't hurt him anymore. But, you know, again, the Hulk is, has survived much worse than that. He's survived several times fighting against uh, Black Bolt. So several of the things that were mentioned in the death battle fight were good. They were very accurate and whatnot. But there was one part that I noticed that at the end of the day, these guys, maybe they are real comic book fans, but they didn't really read the comics that they were looking at. There was the part where they mentioned that the Hulk's healing factor can be overtaxed, as it was with Zeus. This was clearly, and they, they admitted as much, that this was the, the thing that said that it puts Doomsday over the top. Okay, there are several things, many things wrong with this. Let me explain. One, Hulk's healing factor wasn't overtaxed. First off, when he was fighting, it wasn't Zeus versus Hulk one-on-one. -on -one. The Hulk actually had a true epic video game boss encounter. He fought from the bottom of Mount Olympus all the way to the top of Mount Olympus, and he fought every single god and monster and demon available from from Medusa up to Poseidon himself. He fought all of them in order to get to Zeus. And yeah, he was a bit expended by the time he got there, and even when he fought Zeus, he wasn't actually fighting to win. First off, he's not going to beat Zeus, okay? And that's probably the biggest thing here, is that, yeah, Hulk got beaten up by Zeus. Doomsday wouldn't last 25 seconds against Zeus. He wouldn't. And he would not heal, he would not come back. Because this is, look, it's cool that they went and found a cute picture, a single picture or two, on uh, the internet. Here's the actual comic book knowledge. Incredible Hulk numbers 621 and 622. Actually, it was the, the Incredible Hulks. It was plural. The Hulks had to go off and they were in Olympus. And they were all sorts of messed up and they were going to die. And the Hulk was looking for a cure for these guys. And he made the mistake of thinking that Zeus could actually be reasoned with or be impressed by a mortal, especially one that looks like a monster. Especially considering the fact that he and the Hulks had saved Zeus from the Chaos God. So, yeah, go figure. No, Zeus is not going to be impressed. In fact, at one point, when he realizes that the Hulk was actually just trying to sacrifice himself, uh, Mother Hera actually realizes it. See, the difference between reading the comics and thinking that you know something by seeing a picture on there, big difference. Mother Hera realizes that he was just trying to sacrifice himself to impress Zeus. Zeus beat the crap out of him and said, wrong religion, which was a really epic moment. <laughs> it was, a, guys, 621, 622, Marvel Unlimited app, check it out. If you don't actually uh, have the ability to go to the comic book store and find that back issue. Oh my God, great stuff. But, you know, really good fights. But the idea is that Hulk wasn't going to beat Zeus. He would have fared a lot better. But, I mean, you know, we, we talk about how uh, the equal of uh, the Incredible Hulk in the Marvel Universe is Thor. Thor fought against uh, Zeus twice and lost. Uh, even though Zeus couldn't use his thunderbolts against uh, the Thunder God. Think about that, right? That neither of them could really use their lightning against each other because, I mean, you know, it's like, come on, I own the thunder. No, I own the thunder. It wasn't going to work. So they had to fight kind of hand to hand. And at one point, Zeus even caught Mjolnir. He couldn't hold Mjolnir, not because Thor was more powerful. No, because the guy who made uh, Mjolnir was more powerful, Odin. Uh, Odin and Zeus are both Sky Fathers. Odin happens to be the All Father on top of that. He's got that power above all of the other gods of all of the other pantheons in the Marvel Universe. So Odin is going to be more powerful than Zeus, but Zeus is still going to be more powerful than Thor. The second time that Thor fought against Zeus, uh, it was actually hella cursed Thor, so he definitely wasn't going to stand a chance, but he still did a pretty good job against him. And the rest of the Avengers were there, including Namor and the She-Hulk. So, you know, there's that. There's actually a really cool scene where, for the first time, you got to see that uh, the Black Knight 
Dane Whitman was actually able to uh, reflect magical attacks. He knew he could reflect energy attacks, but he knew he could reflect magical attacks with the ebony blade also. And that was a really cool moment. Just so, uh, that's a quick aside. Anyway, again, the idea of actually reading the comics and finding a cute picture on the internet. I find pictures on the internet all the time. And when I find those pictures, I usually know the whole story that goes behind it. These guys from Death Battle clearly did not. There was a scene in there where Hephaestus, the, the god of uh, blacksmiths and craftsmen, comes up to the Hulk after um, he gets hit by Zeus. And he gets hit by Zeus a couple of times, by the way. The Hulk only hits him once because, he, again, he's only trying to impress him. He's not trying to actually fight him. He insults the hell out of him and then he sucker punches him just because he wants Zeus to unload on him. Well, Zeus does. He really does unload on him. But uh, while Hephaestus finishes the final touches of putting the chains on Hulk so that he could be tortured for all of eternity, that was what the plan was at least, Hulk says, you know, I'm going to break these chains. You know, I just have to get mad. Make me mad enough. And he's like, no, I don't think you understand, Hephaestus says. He says, you got hit by Zeus. That's not like getting hit by anybody else. You're not going to heal anytime soon. You're not going to recover your strength for a very long time. This is a sky father. This is a god, a Marvel Universe god, a cosmic entity who's placed in a, a physical form, so to speak. Guys, when push comes to shove, this isn't like him fighting the Abomination. This isn't like him fighting Thanos. And Thanos, mind you, went toe-to-toe -to, -toe to a standstill with Odin. So, and even then, Thanos said, I've been avoiding, I purposely have tried to avoid fighting the Hulk for a long time. And while they both trade a couple punches back and forth, Thanos never once beat the Hulk. And he's tried to. He's genuinely tried to. The only time he actually beat him was when he had the Infinity Gauntlet. And even then, Hulk did a pretty damn bang up job against him, which that shouldn't have been able to happen, but he did. With the Infinity Gauntlet on, for crying out loud, he was able to erase eternity. And eternity is, in a, a nutshell, the living embodiment of everything that exists, all matter, in the Marvel Universe. And Hulk still did a pretty bang up job. But here it is that Zeus hits him and it's magic. It's, it's an ability. If he would have hit Superman, for crying out loud, Superman wouldn't have been able to absorb the solar energy anymore. If he would hit Doomsday, Doomsday isn't going to be able to, uh, you know, come back from this because magically altered, done. So saying that his healing factor was overtaxed, by Zeus, but you know, by getting a good beaten down, like what happened with Zeus, could not be further from the truth, and they clearly did not read these comics, and that's just a really darn shame, because it would have explained a lot more. The Hulk's healing factor can't be overtaxed. Maybe it could, but there's been no proof. We've never seen that. Maybe one of these days somebody will write a comic for the Hulk, hey, maybe it could be you. You come in and you write a comic where the Hulk's healing factor gets overtaxed. In the meantime, it's never happened. And he's been incinerated and come back within three panels. Guys, the Hulk's healing factor, as we know it, simply cannot be overtaxed. No, it was magically, not even just magically. Like, magically sounds so silly, you know, by itself. No, like cosmic forces that, that supersede magic. It's not like Doctor Strange put a spell on him. No, specifically... A cosmic entity who was able to create other gods hit him several times and there's just a, a, a curse of some sort that, you know, here we go, bang, like it, it's hard to even explain. The Hulk simply was not able to heal from that. It's not like getting beaten up by Superman or, or Captain Marvel, Shazam, now he's just Shazam, All right? It's not like getting hit by somebody like that you know, where you just heal. No, his healing factor was turned off. His strength was cosmically depleted. There's not too much you can do against something like that. So that whole entire picture that they showed and everything that they built up around the, the mythology that they just built around this fantasy uh, fight of fantastical creatures was completely based in falsehood because they simply did not read that comic, those two comics, 
to understand what really happened. His healing factor was not overtaxed. It was cosmically, magically shut off. Just like his strength was sapped. It's not even like he couldn't have broken those chains if he wasn't uh, mad enough. The idea was that it was actually shut down. He was depowered, essentially, uh, without actually turning back to Banner. So this is not like getting into a fight and you get overtaxed. The Hulk literally needs a panel to begin the healing process. And understand that when he did get incinerated by X-Ray, uh, and mind you, these are the, the UFOs, all right? The UFOs, which have battled the Fantastic Four and sometimes beaten, sometimes gotten the best of the Fantastic Four. And the Hulk was able to defeat these guys inside of two pages and, and still come back to full heel. And he was just missing a pair of pants. I just want to point out, that's not something you look at lightly. The Hulk is able to take on anybody you put against him. Now, I think that the real reason why a uh, somebody who's a huge fan, please don't say things like fanboy. Fanboy is kind of an insult to people. That's not necessarily, it is a way to put people down. And come on guys, we're all nerds. We've all been put down for liking uh, superheroes and comic books and things like that, you know, in, in school. And we don't need more from each other, right? So come on, man. Here's the thing. I think that enough diehard DC fans don't want the Hulk to have been able to beat Doomsday because if Hulk can beat Doomsday, well, then that means that Hulk can beat Superman. And I'm afraid that's simply not true. Look, writers are what they are, okay? And Marvel has more respect for DC than DC has respect for Marvel. That's not to say that DC disrespects Marvel. What it is, although sometimes they do, <laughs> the fact is that uh, Marvel simply holds DC in a form of reverence. Even the Amalgam universe, before they started the Amalgam universe, when they had the original Marvel vs. DC back in the early 90s, what did they do there? They, they put a few characters up to a vote. You were able to vote on who would win between Lobo and Wolverine, and clearly that was a popularity contest because there's no way on Earth or wherever they were, whatever bar in space they were at, that Logan, that Wolverine would ever be able to beat Lobo. That was clearly a popularity contest, right? But after that aside, not every one of those battles was fan decided. In fact, the Hulk versus Superman one was not fan decided. Look it up, guys. It's the truth. Marvel and DC both decided. DC was like, listen, you know that you're not going to beat Superman with the Hulk, right? We're not going to, we could just stop this conversation right now and forget the whole comic book. And Marvel's like, okay, yeah, sure. Not a problem. I mean, all that time that he fought Doomsday and all that stuff, and here's the Hulk, who's, sorry guys, clearly stronger, clearly able to be stronger than Superman. And I'm not saying that Superman would be beaten by the Hulk. No, no, I believe that Superman would beat the Hulk. I genuinely believe that, hands down, he would beat the Hulk. But the idea that he's going to, that Superman's going to beat him in a couple of panels, never, ever, ever going to happen. So just put that completely out of your mind. There's no way he's going to beat him in a couple of panels. I don't care how hard he hits him. I don't care how much super speed he uses. I don't care if he uses heat vision. Guys, it's not going to happen. The Hulk is going to be able to overcome. And anybody, I know a lot of people like to argue that, oh, well, there's a limit to the Hulk's strength. No, there's not. It's limitless. Okay, but there's a limit to his anger. No, the fact that there's no limit to his strength indicates there's no limit to his anger. The whole thing that they were doing with the pituitary gland in the uh, death battle thing was very cool. I'm sure they have some doctor friend or they looked it up on the internet and they found, obviously found the cool little video and whatnot. And that's about humans. We're talking about comic books. That was probably the dumbest part of what they said because they actually tried to bring real life into this. Guys, this isn't real life. So there is no limit to the Hulk's anger and that's proven by the fact that there is no limit to the Hulk's strength. More than that, I don't believe, and this is mostly just speculation, I don't believe that there's uh, any limit to the speed that Hulk can get angry. I don't see why he couldn't. I mean, going from, you know, regular old, hey, I'm Banner, to all of a sudden, I'm World Breaker Hulk. Uh, maybe they'll make that comic one of these days, but they haven't yet. So I can't prove that that would be the case, but 
just like a regular human being, you can go from from two to a ten in a heartbeat. You know, you get it's not necessarily about you got to work yourself up into a rage. Yeah, sure. If there's nothing around you, if there's no stimuli around you, but for crying out loud, if I got kids and if I saw somebody come up and like push one of my kids, some adult come up and push one of my kids, I'm going to go to a 20 in a heartbeat and I'm tearing somebody's head off. Forget about that Hulk video, you know, where Doomsday took that guy's head off. I, I don't care who you are, <laughs> you know, like this is going to turn violent really quick. So let's just stop that. But the idea is <laughs> that, you know, saying there is no reason why you can't go from a zero to a 10 in just over a heartbeat, there are stimuli that can cause that. And that's in real life. Here we're talking about comic books. So I don't see why Hulk would have to be built up to being, you know, super angry. That could happen quickly. And there's no reason why it couldn't. More than that, the idea that uh, somehow, some way, shape, and form, Doomsday is faster than the Hulk. I don't believe that. At all. I've never seen anything that shows that he have to be faster. Look, the idea that, you know, oh, well, he's he's had to fight guys who are super fast. He fought Superman before, who's super fast. Okay. And what does that mean? I, I, I've seen the Hulk fight against uh, people who are super fast, but Marvel doesn't use super speed the way that DC uses super speed. That's not one of their shticks, you know? They don't do a speed force. They don't do Superman who's super fast and super strong and super everything. They don't do that. But we've seen the Hulk being able to attack super fast guys, attack super fast guys, grab super fast guys. We've seen that before. And do it precisionly so that he's not breaking their wrists as he grabs them. More than that, they just suggest the idea that Doomsday would even be in Hulk's region of strength. Look, he's strong enough to break Superman's arm in Hunter Prey. God, read that series. So great. But that doesn't mean that Hulk couldn't do the same thing. I mean, Hulk is simply in a class of his own in strength. I get it. I get the idea that here we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, Doomsday super strong. He went against Superman. Did anybody remember that comic where Superman flew in? It was in the New 52. Flew in and just ripped Doomsday in half. You can blame the writer. You can blame whatever you want, but it's canon. It happened. It's actually in the DC Comics. You can't say Marvel cheated on that one. No, that was, that was, DC. So, you know, like that's just the way it works. It depends on the writer, and the writer made it so that he was a punk. I mean, realistically, here it is that Doomsday is always supposed to get more and more and more powerful all the time, but. Sorry, I've just seen it as, no, he's getting weaker every time he comes back. He was stronger than he was in Hunter Prey. He was stronger than he was in Death of Superman. But after that, he's only gotten significantly weaker in my honest assessment. Uh, in the one comic, they actually made him being afraid of Superman, afraid of dying. So hey, if that's the case, then why couldn't that happen in... Hulk versus Doomsday. When you look at World War Hulk, he fought against Zom. This was a Zom-possessed Doctor Strange. Now, I'm in the middle of doing my Doctor Strange thing. I only put out the first part so far, so I get it. There's not a lot out there right now, but Zom is a being that uh, we're going way back in the early comics. Eternity himself and Dormammu have had to combine powers and be able to not kill Zom, but store him away. They weren't able to destroy him. That's how powerful this Zom creature is. Eternity. The cosmos. So, so what that means is all the forces in the cosmos, it's in the universe, had to come together to attack a weakened version of this creature, Zom, who got finished fighting Dormammu <laughs> in his own dimension, where he's the most powerful he could be. How powerful is Dormammu, uh, DC guys? Okay. He is Trigon. They're basically the exact same thing. And you know how powerful Trigon is in his home universe? That's how powerful that Dormammu is in the dark dimension. Yeah, like that. So imagine Trigon fighting this creature and not winning. But just, you know, oh, wow, I barely uh, survived this. And then all of the, 
all of the different dimensions together, all the different dimensions in this universe coming together and kidnapping, basically, this creature, Zom, and just tying it up and putting, you know, cosmic powered restraints on the creature and still couldn't, you know, they were able to stop him, but they couldn't actually kill him. That's how powerful Strange was when he became Zom and Hulk defeated him. He shouldn't have been able to defeat him by all accounts, but he defeated him because Hulk is that powerful. Doomsday is not even close to that powerful. He's not a fraction of that strong, especially later on in the comics when he just gets weaker and weaker. I mean, that comic where New 52 Superman ran up and ripped him in half, there was so much buildup to that comic, and that's pretty much where I wiped my hands of Doomsday for the most part, because the writers just didn't know how to treat him the right way. But when push comes to shove, they sat there and they built him up. Oh, the Doomsday who killed you and that other universe, man, that was just a pupa. This is a fully evolved Doomsday. You're not going to be able to handle him. Superman's like, shut up, flies in, rips him in half, absorbs his powers, you know, becomes super do or doomberman. I forget exactly what they called him on the on Reddit and whatnot, but you know, he like, come on, you know, and then went off and fought Brainiac, who is the bigger villain than Doomsday, and just gained more power. The solar flare came shortly after that. Guys, I actually read these comics, and I think a lot of you guys kind of read these comics too, right? So, I think that when you really look at it fairly, there's no way, not just on Earth, there's just no way that Doomsday is going to beat the Hulk. And unfortunately, even when he comes back the second time, what's he going to do? Evolve body armor? Okay, Hulk will get stronger. That's his evolution. He just gets stronger. The ability to beat that thing up too. I know that the argument took place in the death battle where, oh, the Hulk can get hit hard enough so he turns back into Banner. Yeah, that was Sentry. Sentry has, he's not just the Superman of the Marvel Universe. There are actually a lot of Supermans in the Marvel Universe. And there's, there's a whole lot of them. It's not just one. So, you know, he had his own certain powers and one of those abilities that, yeah, but he also, mind you, got turned into his human form. A lot of people aren't, you know, paying attention to that. They both got turned into their normal, regular, depowered forms. So it's just the idea that they fought to a standstill. That's what was actually supposed to be implied there. Yeah, he was also able to turn back into the Hulk if he wanted to at any moment. He literally just looked at it as, you know, I just want this to stop. I'm too angry. I'm too angry to continue. Please, just, let's just end this. You know, end me before, I, because I'm going to wind up killing all of you. And as strong as Worldbreaker Hulk was, Banner was still in there. He was still in there, and he was trying to hold it back. He says, it, it, it's, it's in the comics, guys. Look, there was a lot of great cinematography, and they looked at a lot of cute things on the internet, but the guys at Death Battle did not read those comics. They simply did not. Because if they did, they'd know that Doomsday is not going to be the Hulk. I just don't see it ever happening. It's not a slight on Doomsday. It's, you know, but he beat up on Darkseid. Guys, so did Batman. I'm not trying to make light of it. It's just, you know, it's all fantasy. We're living in a fantasy world, you know, like that. But... In this fantasy, you got to look at what was written. And yeah, it's not a, like I said, it's not a slight on DC at all. Superman can beat the Hulk, but Doomsday cannot beat the Hulk. Just like Doomsday cannot beat Superman. Sorry. It was a, almost a fluke that he beat Superman the first time because Superman didn't know him and was holding back. So it, it, there's no slight involved. It's just comics, baby. Anyways, guys, this is Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed.